now return to Driver's Seat on Modern Marvels. Some of the fastest and most dangerous rides around are experienced from the driver's seats of two utterly different vehicles, speedboats and airplanes. Combining the best elements of each results in one of the wildest rides of all. Welcome to the driver's seat of a hydroplane. These boats are called hydroplanes, so hydro for the water and plane for the air. Here at Mission Bay in San Diego, California, professional hydroplane drivers are dueling for top honors at the World Series of Powerboat Racing. But first, the driver has to squeeze into a cockpit so small, the steering wheel has to come out before he can go in. So as you can see in the cockpit, it uh, seats one, barely. The cramped conditions are similar to the ones found behind the wheel of a Formula One or Indy style race car. And just like race car drivers, behind the wheel of a hydroplane, standard attire is a flame resistant suit. We have to have a fireproof suit just in case it catches on fire. Um, uh, we also have to have the shoes and the socks and the whole deal. Next is a helmet, certified helmet. You gotta have a crash lid. And in my case, I came across these uh, visors from the military that I've mounted onto my helmet in case there's glare, you know, I got a good visor. Underneath the helmet, he's wearing form-fitted earpieces that protect his ears from engine noise and keep him in constant contact with his team. It's also uh, works real good to keep the water out of your ears if you're upside down. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes that'll happen. Anyone in the driver's seat of a hydroplane also wears a specialized neck brace called a Hans device, which keeps the head and neck secure during even the most brutal crashes. Sometimes we're in so tight, it's hard to breathe at first, but you get, you get used to it. And then last but not least, very critical is our air mask. And it's, a, it's like an F-16 fighter mask. Got my communication in here. It seals really tight to my face. In case we are upside down, the cockpits will fill up with water. The only thing hydroplane drivers need more than safety is stamina. It's just physically exhausting to be able to turn the steering wheel, run the canard wings, and just physically hold on and keep your head up and, and keep your focus is unbelievably exhausting. You know, it's not a paved track like you'd find typical in, uh, in auto racing. It's very bumpy and you're going through a turn at anywhere between three to four and a half Gs. So it becomes extremely violent. Traveling at a max speed of 200 plus miles per hour, a hydroplane is the fastest thing on water. Though as the driver of one of these crafts knows, very little of the vehicle actually touches the water. In fact, the hydroplane is designed to keep as little of the boat in contact with the surface as possible. Essentially, it flies over the water. Here's how it works. The bottom of the craft is flat, but the deck is a smooth curve, shaped like the edge of an airplane wing. The design forces oncoming air to travel slower over the top of the craft than the bottom, creating lift. Ideally, only the propeller remains in the water to provide propulsion. A hydroplane relies on air pressure to, uh, to run. So it's, you know, it's got a tunnel in the middle and the sponsor's on the outside, and the air rushing through there actually suspends the boat above the water. And due to the fact that we got a lot of aerodynamics, we have a front wing now that we run with our left foot. And I can actually bring this thing down and create lift and get the nose of the boat to come up, which is pretty dangerous, especially when it's windy. And then if we get going too fast, I can just bring it back down. So we literally just fly the boat. But the craft's aerodynamic shape and its front wing aren't the only design features that make the experience behind the wheel less about boating and more about flying. The most commonly used engine in hydroplanes is a 3,000 horsepower turbine, the same one used on the Army's hulking Chinook helicopters. As this driver races atop the water at more than 200 miles per hour, 
He's riding a fine edge between control Death Bernard crashes out at the end of lap one. and catastrophe. Generate too much lift, and the results could be fatal. In July 2010, at a race on the Detroit River, a malfunction sent JW careening toward a seawall, crowded with spectators, at 70 miles per hour. The wreck could have been life-threatening, but thanks to the arsenal of safety equipment inside the driver's seat, JW only suffered a broken foot. I'm extremely lucky. The cockpits that we have now are unbelievably safe. You know, nobody, when they engineered these cockpits, never ever would have thought of a scenario going straight into a, into a wall. Yeah, I got a broken foot, but that's a big deal. 